So I emailed Sebastian earlier today and asked him, you know, what what if anything he would like to say or what he would want to read tonight. And he wrote back. Um, he said, first tell them what happened to me, which you all know. In which, while it's funny, is actually sort of a travesty at the same time uh, that we, you know they wouldn't let a writer in the United States simply because of what had written. Stop um, him for moral turpitude. Moral turpitude. And as he said, he's done a lot of things, but he never drank turpentine. So he could not understand it. Um, and then he asked me to read you this. One can be a peacock in public and still have the soul of a poet. And there is nothing more precious in the world than the poetic soul. A poet, if not the most useful, is the least harmful member of society. We are millionaires of love and love is always open arms. With arms open, you allow love to come and go as it will, freely, for it'll do so anyway. No prisons, guards, chains, or obstructions in the world are strong enough to detain it for a second. It's so easy to clip a bird's wings, yet no one quite knows how it flies. Thank you all for coming. Josh is my representative on Earth this evening. I love him because I love poets. So unfortunately for me, Sebastian uses a lot of big words. Uh, so I'm reading from Dandy the Under Underworld. I've got some copies here afterwards. Um, and I'm reading a section that seemed appropriate for this evening. I was 36. Mozart at my age had already been dead for a year. One of the many troubles of growing older is that it gets progressively harder to find a famous historical figure who hadn't yet amounted to anything by the time he was your age. <laughs> <laughs> Unhappiness lies in that gap between our talents and our expectations. I moped about. To be a failure in London is to starve to death outside a banqueting hall. Mm. The delicate aroma of an exquisitely cooked dinner entwining your dying breath. I had gone from loser to user to has-been without ever passing through that middle bit. It. I decided to act. I became a prostitute. An agency that advertised in the back of soft porn magazines went by what it clearly imagined to be the sophisticated name of Loam. It turned out to be based in cosmopolitan Leicester and was run by a distinguished duo called Cheryl and Rio. Cheryl, who wrote those black lace novels that dally about with women's bits in the boudoir, was the company director. Rio, a diminutive, diminutive ringlet-haired, snake-hipped gigolo, was the goods. I applied to be taken on. We're relaunching, said Rio. We're wondering whether you might like to come along to the photo shoot for our ads. Soon, quarter-page advertisements featuring me, beetle-browed amid the deep shadows, were appearing in women's magazines. I was the man, or loam, I should say. <laughs> High-caliber es male escorts, chaperones for discerning ladies who deserve nothing less than the best. That was the promise that was given to the good readers of OK. You are now the public face of our enterprise, Rio informed me, our flagship. This was consoling. It's nice to be in the same boat as one's betters, especially if it's sinking. <laughs> I sat back in my flat and waited for the customers. The first point of contact was the telephone. This proved to be to my advantage. I have the voice of a lobotomized homosexual drug addict <laughs> who has decided to keep his head in a bucket. <laughs> Clearly, this put off all but the most courageous. <laughs> the first 10 calls came to nothing. Thank God for that. Yes, I drawled to the next caller. This is Sebastian speaking, mm -hmm. albeit in a ludicrous voice. May I help you? Oh fuck, I just got myself booked. Fuck, fuck, fuck. What was I going to do? I'd wanted to turn myself into a slave and sell myself into freedom and all that, but I hadn't imagined for a moment that anyone would be buying. Right, first things first, wardrobe. People call me a whore and a pimp. How I wish they'd just make up their mind so I would know how to dress for the compliment. <laughs> all that glitters was now sold for 150 pounds for the first hour and 100 pounds every hour after that, with a flat rate of 500 pounds for an overnight stay. It was expensive at any price. I arrived cap in hand and condom in pocket in front of a portico door, sleepily invigilated. Invigilated? <laughs> I don't speak British. 
by a pair of stone composite lions. Ding dong, ding dong. I performed my last frantic OCD rituals on the passive leonines as I waited. Good evening, Sebastian, a voice purred as I performed my 36th pat on the left animal's head. Uh, hello, nice pets. They are rather winning, aren't they? Talking to her the fir for the first time, I almost fainted with relief. Not because she was Raquel Welch, but because she wasn't Gertrude Stein. <laughs> We're going to a swimming pool party, she told me over a glass of Campari and lemonade. My husband, from whom I am separated, will be there with a some new brunette. The ice chuckled in her glass as she smiled and tossed her shiny blonde bob. So I want you to pose as my latest beau. I nodded willingly. That was a good start. Posing is about the only job I can do. He won't hit me though, will he? I asked nervously. My life is a credit to my cowardice, if that's all right with you. She giggled prettily. I watched the tremors fading amid a plump embon point. Embon point? That a, <laughs> that a pink scoop neck dress, nicely rocking around the waistline, I noticed, revealed. She drove me there in one of those massive four-wheel drive cars that mothers kill other mothers' children with. <laughs> <laughs> we went into a yellow stripe marquee and started mixing with the guests who were circulating among the, the forest of cut flowers. I smiled and said as little as possible, but gazed, with what was beginning to feel like genuine adoration, at my employer. She would look at, up at me and smile back. Some women have a second string to their bow. Other prefer a second bow to their string. I'm not sure that she didn't have both. I was starting to enjoy this game. Sex, like all games of chance, is more interesting when played for money. I kissed her goodbye the next morning and thought, slightly wistfully, that I would have visited her for free. The 500 pound cash had replaced the condoms in my pocket, and I have to say I felt pretty chuffed. I rate prostitutes, because they obviously rate themselves. Sadly, it was all beginner's luck. I wasn't so fortunate next time. I was called to a flat late at night in Chelsea, and arriving in a state of violent excitement that, that I was to learn always preceded a job. I found myself staring into the face that would have launched a thousand dredgers. <laughs> Good on the phone, add two stone, is a general rule of thumb. <laughs> oh lord, she was dressed in wool. <laughs> Forget a chassis belt, belt, an alpaca jumper will do. Good evening, yes, thank you, I'd love a drink. Very, very strong drink. What a nice flat. Courtesy is opening a door for a woman you would not wish to open a bedroom door for. Unfortunately, I had to open the door for the bedroom. She kept worrying that the condom was going to burst, which I thought was a bit rich. She was a dog. I was more worried about having rabies than babies. I crossed the line that night. It made all my jo next jobs easier. I took the view that if someone wanted my body more than I did, they could have the damn thing. After all, I hadn't cared for it much myself. I'd never gone to the gym or entangled myself in yoga or succumbed to any other such corporeal diseases. They rot the soul. The only function of my body, as far as I was concerned, was to carry my beautiful face around. Mm -hmm. It was merely a pestle for my head. I like this work. I may like my friends, but I love strangers. For a start, they haven't yet heard all my tired lines. I had gone into this job looking for love, not money. And what better proof of love can there be than money? There were plenty of women I didn't particularly take to. But sometimes it's a form of love just to talk to somebody that you have nothing in common with and still be fascinated by their presence. I turned my entire persona into a commodity. It was charming. I'd always had problems with unpaid sex. It never really works, does it? No human relationship is adequate to any human desire. And what is love, anyway, but prostitution? At least now I know I had a valid reason for liking my lovers. They paid me.